This video is the second out of four videos from my How to Flat Toe a Ford Bronco series. In this video, I'll be installing the Blue Ox BX2687 base plates to my sixth generation Ford Bronco in the Outer Banks trim with a standard bumper. If you haven't watched the previous video, I highly recommend it because it provides a broad overview of everything required to make the Ford Bronco flat towable. The link to that, all the parts I used, and the next video are in the description. With that, let's get started. This base plate is what will be taking the place of the tow loops under the standard bumper. First the skid plate gets removed, which is a total of 6 15mm bolts. Pinch the rear of the tow loop shroud and it'll slip off. These two 15mm bolts securing the tow loop get removed, and be careful not to have it fall on you because it's heavy. Do this on both sides. Next to where the tow hook was, the holes get drilled out using a half inch drill. Be careful here if you're using a high torque drill. It can snag easily and twist your wrist or break the drill bit. Ask me how I know. Next, the base plate gets installed using the same two 15mm bolts from the tow loop. The instructions call for red Loctite on pretty much everything, so apply it here as well. I ran into a spot of trouble here because the torque table didn't say anything about the torque spec for a 15mm bolt. I shot an email to Blue Ox, and their reply was that they didn't have a spec for 15 millimeters, and to quote, do between 120 and 180 foot-pounds. Using an extension socket, I shot for 120 foot-pounds, because it didn't seem like the threads could handle anything more than that. Next, I installed the mounting brackets using the hardware they provided. This will take the half-inch diameter and one and a half-inch long bolt. The lock washer goes right on the bolt. The other side comes out on the inside of the base plate and gets secured with a washer and nylon lock nut. The instructions say to keep it loose for now. And here's the part that got extremely tricky and frustrating for me. At this time, the instructions say to use the whiz nuts to properly place the nuts above the holes that were reamed out. What happened in actuality, though, is that the mounting bracket holes didn't line up with the existing holes that I reamed out on the Bronco. The tolerance mismatch was actually pretty bad, off by what seemed like a quarter inch. I also asked Blue Ox about this particular issue, and they didn't really have much to say. Their first assumption was actually that I ordered the wrong part. I will say that the instructions say this, quote, the dimensional variations between otherwise identical vehicles can be considerable. While the base plate was designed for easy installation, it may be necessary to tailor the base plate slightly to compensate for vehicle manufacturers' tolerances. In my case, that may have been a bit of an understatement, because I wound up having to ream both the mounting bracket and the Bronco just to make it align. It was not easy, and I didn't really feel good about all this mangling, and I'm sure it voided the warranty. My opinion is that if they are aware of the broad tolerances, then they should have made the holes on the mounting brackets oblong to be more accommodating of this fact. With that rather important tidbit out of the way, let's resume. I wound up cutting the rods off of the whiz nuts because they were a bigger hindrance to me than a help. I aligned the nuts using the rods and my hands and just eyeballing exactly where the nut was in relation to the mounting hole. These were half inch grade 8 bolts, so I torqued them to 119 foot pounds in accordance with the table. The final step involved looping the provided safety cables around the frame of the Bronco and securing them to the base plates. The idea that should any of this fail, you'll have one last piece of security preventing the Bronco from fully separating from your tow vehicle. It's not the easiest thing to show, unfortunately, but the most important thing is to keep the safety cable away from any moving parts and to make sure it's not rubbing on any fluid lines, which is easier said than done. Finally, I had to trim the skid plate in order to accommodate the base plate. The skid plate is soft enough to be cut with a box cutter, but I also had good luck using a multi-tool with a saw attachment. This too was annoying to me because the skid plate happens to be an $800 part, and should I ever want to revert to factory, I'll now have two large gouges in it. Again, I feel like Blue Ox could have done a better job here. Regardless, the skid plate gets reinstalled, and this part of the job is finished. In the next video, I'll go over how to install the Blue Ox wiring harness for the brake lights, as well as how to run wiring so that the tow vehicle trickle charges the Bronco's battery. Until next time, thank you for watching.